Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? Kevin here coming at you with another video. So I'm not working on this, I just wanted to uh, go over some things with you. I just moved it out um, from over there. I have to move both of these four wheelers while the weather is, is uh, nice and there's no snow on the ground. I have to move them up by the tent so we can work on this winter. So I was going, I'm just looking at them and I'm like, okay, all right. So it looks like it's got a new ignition switch. The wires are disconnected, don't know where they go. Um... And I got to looking at this bike, and I said to myself, Self, this is going to be a great parts bike. We're not going to build this bike. We're going to use this one as parts. And let me show you guys a few things, what I'm looking for, okay? So we see in the front here, at a quick glance, it's the bolts are rusted in the, into the frame, and it's missing one of the mounts. See the mount on the other side? It's supposed to have a triangle-shaped mount on this side as well. So then I get to looking. Okay, all right, fair enough. It's got the actual proper um, tank vent and cap. It's got the cover. I go to the back of the bike. So I'm like, okay, those are a couple of positives. And then I look down here, and I can see that the chain guard is all smashed in, and the axle um, for the brakes are bent in on this side. That's not a big deal. That's not a deal breaker by any stretch of the means. I can literally snap that chain cover off, tap it with a hammer, and bring it back. No big deal. But it all adds up. So you got your covers that are dented. You have paint all over the bike. You have missing motor mount. And then you're looking at all the beautiful parts and pieces on this bike, and you're saying to yourself, self why would someone do this all to a bike? Is there any engine damage? What is the, what is the um, you know, what's it going to take to get this bike up and going? And then you get to looking at all the parts and pieces. Well, it's got the headlight bulb I need with the socket. Not a big deal, but the decal is in fairly good shape. Handlebars are straight. It's got a good choke cable right here. It's got a good throttle cable. So it's got a lot of good parts and pieces. Then you go and look at the other bike that I got from Harvey Spooner. Here's the bike I got from Harvey. So, and, and you guys can go back and look at his video. He actually did a first start on this. So he's had this bike running. He backed out the valves. We're going to have to adjust the valves. But he just backed them out. This has the incorrect tank vent. Um, I have the carburetor for this. He gave me the carburetor and I cleaned it. Okay. There are a few notable differences on this bike compared to that bike one this this engine's black the other one is like that gray color so that's for different years um this one has this guard in the front here that's bent and electrical taped all up the other one's got a nice one with the um what's we call it there with the nice cover on it this one is missing the headlight bulb socket and wiring the other bike's got all that once again not a big deal but the decal is better on the other one this one has a bad kill switch. This one has the choke down here, not up top. So that's where the ignition switch would be mounted. So I'm looking at all these things on this bike. And, I mean, switch feels good. The grips are nice. The brake is on. You know, there's all kinds of, there's all kinds of, uh, and released. So there's all kinds of goodies on this bike. And then you go to the back of the bike. Got the brake light and everything is straight so which tells me a couple of things one this bike right here wasn't hammered as bad this bike has the factory tires on it and basically <laughs> they warm down to nothing now here's a couple of little insights on this bike specifications 11.1 horsepower not a big, uh, not a big uh, high horsepower bike. There is no suspension, period. So what they do is they run these tires really, really low on tire pressure, and that right there gives you a little bit of a bounce. So this has a complete rigid frame, chain drive with a um, the metal cover so that the chain doesn't get dirty. This is really just a yard donkey, okay? So what are we gonna do? 
what we're going to do is we're going to fix up the bike I got from Harvey Spooner. We're going to put lawn and garden tires like I did on my, um, what do you call it, Yamaha Breeze. And this bike is super cool. This is a semi-automatic five-speed with reverse. And you can see the little reverse gear right there. And we're going to be doing a full-on video. So what, do I, what happens with this bike when it's all said and done? So what happens is this bike right here is going to live out its days as a parts machine. Of course, as always, I have to hear it run. So we're going to do a will it run video on this engine. But I got to pull the carburetor off and get that into the ultrasonic cleaner. Now tonight's supposed to be a good night and tomorrow's supposed to be a good day. So, and, and we have to finish up on Aaron's bike. So we're going to be working on Aaron's bike. But we're going to yank the carburetor off this one. So I can get that in the ultrasonic cleaner. And get this carburetor clean. Now I already cleaned before the carburetor from Harvey Spooner. So now I have one that I can literally just take it, pop it on. But I'm going to take a lot of this stuff off. Like this vent tube. That air filter box. That seat. The handlebar setup. The whole thing. Undo the bolts. I'm taking this whole piece. The whole apparatus. The whole the whole enchilada. The whole thing. The whole mumbo number five. Everything you see here is going to go on Harvey's bike. This guard right here in the front. That will also wait, make its way to Harvey's bike. These tires are shot. This thing is never going to see a trail. So what we're going to do with it is we're going to put lawn and garden tires on them. And then we'll switch them out. Like I did on my Yamaha Breeze. As you can see I got lawn and garden tires on the Yamaha Breeze. And I tubed all the wheels. The nice, beautiful, awesome thing about having these... Um, we call it the grass tires. It doesn't tear up the lawn. So this one right here is an automatic. Straight up one gear forward. One gear reverse. And neutral in the middle. And this is literally a yard donkey. I use this thing for everything. So if you look at my trailer hitch that's on here. I got that. Someone made that on eBay. I've got a 1 and 7 8 ball. So I can pull my trailer around. And then you see that little bar over there with the little hole in it. That's for pulling my lawn and garden trailers. Now... There is suspension on this one, okay? There is a mono shock in the back and a full suspension in the front, independent, with drum brakes all the way around. One brake in the back, two brakes in the front. Both the Yamaha and Suzuki are both 125 cc's. So technical 124 cc's on this one. But uh, they, they call them 125. LT 125 is what this one is. And the other one is the Yamaha, uh, Yamaha Breeze 125. So, like I said, they're fun bikes. And they're not big trail bikes. Now, there is the next bike up, which is the LT 185. And my neighbor has one of those, which you'll probably see on my channel when he brings it home um, at some point. But his has the same bike, same frame, no, no rear suspension at all, and no front brakes. By the way, these have no front brakes. The only brake on this bike is in the back. So, <laughs> when Harvey Spooner said it steers like a pig, it rides like a pig, it's a pig. It does. I mean, literally, if you've ever ridden a pig at a farm, this is what it will be like. Okay? No suspension. No brakes in the front. You are relying to stop this 125cc with a single drum brake in the back. Yeah. Pretty scary. <laughs> pretty scary but it is once again it's not a very um it's not one of those bikes that you're going to be doing this is great for kids and i have a seven year old so he's going to get a blast out of this bike when it's all done plus it teaches him how to shift even though the shift and pattern is backwards so um basically up is one and then it goes all the way down and then uh you got your, your reverse and it's semi-automatic so once again Four stroke, nothing crazy, nothing to write home about, but they are fun bikes. So anyway guys, I'm off for now. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and uh, I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Hey YouTube, how are you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming at you with another video. 
been very very busy today guys very very busy it has been so super nice out so i figured i'd move around some stuff out of the shop moved up the uh got those out back from out back and moved them up here to the shop where we're going to be working on them over the winter not right now um this is the one from harvey spooner and that one right there is the one i picked up the other day that i did a first look on so we got both of these moved up here i gotta chain them together take the carburetor i'm gonna pull the carburetor off that one real quick not doing it tonight but i'll do it tomorrow i'll do that off camera it's the same carburetor system you guys have always seen so i'm just gonna rip that off and then we'll take it apart on video um and then when i go to put it i think i yeah i I did a video on that already, so, and then we'll do evaluations on these. Um, move the bikes around. We have Aaron's bike is off the bench. Yes. We're going to be doing a first start on this thing tomorrow. Um, so I got it off. I got Dave's bike back up there. The parts came in for Dave's motor. So we're going to be putting that together and getting that thing done. And then, um, as you guys remember that from the other video there, the parts came in so and then Aaron's bike engines complete and all together I gotta change the spark plug on it and then headlight back in finish off the wiring and then his bike is all up and done and we got to fix that that boot on the uh, fork and then that's pretty much it for his bike his bike could be all set and uh, I can't wait to take this thing for a quick spin so that is going to be super cool and Elvin's bike is after that and um, this has some ignition problems so we're going to go through the bike do a full evaluation on the bike see what it actually needs go through all the checks and all that type of stuff and then we'll go from there so we got some stuff going on guys we have a plethora of bikes to work on well the Suzuki DS 100 out back I have a, a Suzuki DS 80 um, that we're going to be doing a um, lower end on. I have another Suzuki DS80 engine. That came from uh, GTZ Garages. Todd over there sent me up an engine. Um, he's actually sending me up another engine. Which is for an MC1 90cc. Which is going to find its way onto a KD80 frame. Um, we have that beautiful black bike motor right there. The KE100. I'm waiting for the Allen head bolts to come in for that. And then, oh, went the wrong way with that one, didn't it? Oh, what's going on here? Okay, there we go. Um, so we have a plethora of stuff. We got to do the handlebars to my um, D, my Yamaha Breeze. So we have a lot of stuff to work on, guys. And out back, we got to finish up Harvey Spooner's bike, um, which is probably going to be, yeah. So we're going to do Elvin's bike and then bring the KD80 in. And get that finished off and do a first start on that so we have a lot of stuff to do guys and then we gotta do a road trip up to go see harvey spooner up there in new york so it's gonna be fun so anyway guys i just wanted to touch base and let you guys know what's going on because we have a lot of stuff to do i want to say thank you to all my new subscribers thank you guys and if you haven't hit that subscribe button please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so when i post a video you get it and uh, what do you get out of this channel when uh, when you hit that subscribe button? Well, let me tell you what you get. You get 30 years of experience working on bikes. I teach tips, tricks, and techniques on how to do repairs on bikes. Um, basically, I'm teaching you. And you have a wingman. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And I will do my best to answer them. Um, I do my best. I talk to a lot of you guys on the phone. Do text message through email you guys you guys are just great and i got a lot of love when i wasn't feeling good so i just want to say thank you for all that support and uh, i really enjoy talking with you guys i talk to a lot of you guys all the time and it's pretty cool and and this on this channel we don't have what they call a stupid question there's no stupid questions um every question requires an answer and i do my best to answer them so I just want to take a moment and say thank you guys for all your comments, all your questions, and I do my best. And a lot of people are like, oh, Kevin, what's that plug right there on the cylinder head right there? You a spark plug there? These bikes right here, they would put two spark plugs in them. And then if 
a spark plug like that one got fouled out or shorted, they would disconnect the coil wire and simply move it over to the next wire. It was pretty neat how they did that. So, pretty cool. And if you had a cylinder head that was a high compression, you could put a high compression release in one side. So it's pretty cool. This what these things look like. This. That neat. Cool. So anyway guys, I'm off for right now. I'm going to call it a night. I got to chain those uh, two bikes up and top them over and get them ready. So I'm going to let you guys go for now, but I will talk to you guys later. I'm out.